It's the Eagle Community Television Forum with your host, Gary Shorman. Hello, I'm Mike Kerner, in for Gary Shorman this week on the forum, brought to you by Hayes Med. And our guest this week is Kyle Carlin. Did I get it right, Carlin? Yep, Carlin. Okay, good. Because yeah. sometimes around Hayes, there's Carlin, there's Carlene, you, you know the whole thing. Yep, I, I hear it a lot. So, you're yeah. around Hayes a lot. Of course. But uh, Kyle is the uh, school psychologist for USD 49, and... I don't know, you can expand on your job a little bit. Do you cover the whole 489? Um, there's actually eight school psychologists that cover um, USD 489. I'm, I'm just one of that eight. Um, I cover, um, I'm currently in a role with the school district where I'm supporting um, our positive behavior supports initiative. So I'm in all of the buildings in some capacity. I also cover lacrosse in a more traditional school psych role, helping um, students with special education needs and social emotional needs. Okay, we're going to so. get into all that here in a little bit, but what I want to do is kind of get a little background on you, people get to know you. You've been around Hayes for a while. You spent quite a few years at, at Fort Hayes State University. <laughs> exactly. <yep. laughs> so where, where did you grow up? Um, I grew up in um, Norton for most of my life. Um, and then moved to um, Joaquini during high school, graduated from there, and then um, I joined the military for um, eight years, um, the Army Reserves out of the, the unit here in Hayes. Um, got to go out to Colby for a little bit for community college and then came back to Hayes and I've been here for, oh, 12 years now. So. Now, when you when you started in grade school, did you think you were going to be a school psychologist? Oh, not at all. When I was in grade school, I wanted to be a sheriff. <laughs> okay. Well, and that's kind of a typical kid kid kind of thing. Yep. And then you grow up a little bit and get into, um, I guess, into high school and still not a psychologist? No. no. At, even at that point, mm -hmm. I was wanting to be um, more of a lawyer. I ended up actually, when I first went out to Colby, I um, had intention of becoming a um, computer scientist. I took one semester of classes in computer science and realized that's not for me and when um, I had taken a psychology course and got kind of um, wrapped into that and kind of um, got pulled into psychology later learned what school psychology was and and Got I think, hooked, I think so. that kind of typically happens in the school yeah. world. You know, you don't know what you're going to be when you're younger. There's so many, so many, I guess, uh, big hurdles out there to, to get over. And then you get into high school and you don't know what you want to be. Then you get into college, you still don't know what you want to be. <laughs> and I, I guess, you know, they've said that uh, most high school or college kids change their, their majors like five times. But I think the schools anymore, the high schools anymore, are prepping the kids so much better than they had back in the 80s, 90s, and even early 2000s that kids are a little bit more prepared when they go into college. Oh, I think so. Absolutely. And, and you probably see that, you know, being in 489. Now, at four, at, uh, at uh, psychology, as a psychologist, you went to Fort Hayes for what, three years then? Um, I was in, I got my bachelor's of course in traditional four year, um, but then for the school psych psychology program, there's a one year for a master's and then another year for your education specialist degree and then another year for your internship. So about three years, um, there's a practicum in there in your second year where you um, kind of like a student teaching kind of element there. So. And then after you get done with your degree, I'm sure there's a lot of certificates that you have to get and you have to, to maintain as, as you go on and like learning credits that you have to do too. Yep, correct. And um, of course we get school psychologists are licensed through the um, Kansas Department of Education um, and we have continuing education that we have to continue to to be certified in that. So. so what does an everyday psychologist like you <laughs> do in school every day? I mean, you go into school, uh -huh. what, are you, what are you thinking when you're going uh, in every morning? Well, school psychologists have a, a ton of different things that they can do. Every day is a little bit different. Um, mostly we focus on um, academic needs. Um, we're often involved with special education evaluations, um, determining if a child um, has a disability and needs um, specialized instruction. Um, to support that. Um, that includes, um, you know, um, interviewing um, teachers, observing the student, also doing some assessments with the student. Um, we also, in addition to the academic support that we provide in developing interventions and everything there, we also provide social emotional support, um, both at a systems level, kind of helping teachers in their classrooms support the behavior and the social emotional um, needs, but also working individually with kids. Uh, do, you do you have to bring, because I know the, the world's changing, and I'll get into that as my next question, uh, but what about kids and then the relationship with parents? Do you ever have to bring parents in and kind of work together with parents and kids and, and try to work some stuff out together as, as kind of a unit? Uh, um, personally, I don't work directly with parents and kids together, but um, I certainly will take the information I'm working on 
with kids and share that with parents so that they can reinforce those ideas at home. Well, my next question here kind of goes back to that a little bit. There are, you know, so many parents anymore in today's world where there, there's a lot of divorce, there's a lot of things happening in, in the world that, that uh, affects kids and parents, uh, kids moving a lot. Uh, growing up with grandparents, growing up with other families, uh, a lot of foster kids. Do you see a lot of that where you have to deal with that and, 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 and train on that to maybe get kids back on track a little bit? Um, certain, there's, um, the dynamics in, in homes is certainly diverse for, um, I can, there's probably not um, a family unit that is really the same with any of the kids that I work with. And so um, absolutely have to be familiar with um, working within foster systems and, and um, homes that have you know, more than two parents and you know, you've got your step parents. And in some cases, the, I think at one point I had at, at a meeting, we had six people who identified as parents for a, a child at different points. And so um, it's just, it, it's a very complex system and definitely have to have some background to understand how to work with all those people. And I would think that would be challenging, not only for you, but also challenging for the kid because they've got so many, so many directions that they're taking direction from. Uh, they're also um, uh, finding, finding the time and, and, the, and, the, and the quiet place and the, and the area to do their studies and to do their homework. I think that that would be really tough for you to, to really get a grasp on it as a psychologist to try to get all that figured out all the time. Yeah, that, it definitely is complicated because um, um, a child's trying to understand a child's ecology, the, the life that they're living in, and all the different environments that, are in their, that they are in, um, and getting everybody on the same page, working in the same direction is, is very challenging. So. And, and you know what you say, a follow up to that too, you know, I've seen it personally that, you know, some have come from really bad situations that are very, very normal. It just depends on their coping too. Some, some of the kids can cope so much better with it than others. Exactly. There's a lot of um, resilience factors that can play into um, how a child handles different stresses in their life. And, and certainly um, a student or a child who has um, some of the more resilient factors, but also has more um, uh, people wrapped around them, whether it's teachers or, or um, grandparents or um, aunts and uncles, m mom and dad, the more people that are there wrapped around them, um, the better the results usually are. So do you have to have a lot of meetings with teachers uh, throughout the day or even after school and stuff to try to figure out how the kid's doing and, and how they're responding to whatever maybe you guys are doing? Oh yeah, there's a lot of meetings. Just again, because it's so important for everybody to be in the, going in the same direction, um, you have to um, get everybody at the table together talking about, about the same stuff. And because of the nature of the school day, trying to get all those people mm -hmm. at, at the table at the same time often means after school, before school, mm -hmm. um, kind of. And then doing paper trails too, for because I'm sure that schools want the, want the paper trail, social services want the paper trail. Yeah. A lot of people want that. Exactly. And, and trying to track down, for students who move in, trying to track down records can mm -hmm. be a, a challenge as well just because um, especially if a student has happened to move two or three times, depending on their situation, it can be difficult to find this, the right paperwork that you're needing to kind of show what's been done already. Because you don't want to be re reinventing the wheel if, if, if somebody's already figured out what works for this kid. Well, so. that, that does happen. Well, we've talked about that, but we, we haven't talked about, and we're going to go to that in the second half of the show here. We're going to take a break. But in the second half of the show, we're going to talk about another piece that you're going to put on your resume now, and it's called author. Mm -hmm. So we'll get to that because uh, Kyle is also an author and we'll talk about this, that and some awards that he's won. And that's all on the second half of the forum. It's brought to you by Hayes Med. I'm Mike Kerner. Thanks for being with us today. Hayes Med is your first and best choice for health care. They're the only facility providing tertiary level services in this region. With more than 70 physicians and 26 specialties, ranging from heart, orthopedic, spine care, cancer, obstetrics and gynecology, wound care, rehabilitation and surgery, including the Da Vinci robotic surgery, Hayes Med is your comprehensive health provider for people throughout Western Kansas. Hayes Med, helping people be healthy. Are you frustrated with Wi-Fi dead zones in your home? It happens when you don't have Boost, the cutting-edge Wi-Fi solution from Eagle Communications. A Boost-certified Eagle technician maps your home, then installs a dual-band modem and router, plus discreet access points to deliver wall-to-wall Wi-Fi with no dead zones. Boost powers all your family's devices in all the places you love to live. Get Boost. Wi-Fi made simple. Only from Eagle Communications. Call today. 
Welcome back to the forum. I'm Mike Kerner in for Gary Sharman this week. By the way, if you've got a guest idea or show suggestions, Gary would love to hear from you. That's gary.sharman at eaglecom.net. The forum brought to you by Hayes Med. Today's guest, Kyle Carlin, and he is the school psychologist or one of the school psychologists at US 489, USD 489. And today, Kyle, we are going to talk a little bit more in the second half of the show about another piece that we're adding to your resume or you, you've added to it. You are now an author. Correct. So you wrote a book. What, what what inspired you? I want to grab the book oh, there. Sure. What inspired oh. you to write this book? Is it a kid's book? Um, yeah, this is a, a children's book targeted at kids, uh, mostly age three to eight, but depending on developmental levels, it can um, probably be for um, kids of um, even older kids um, would benefit from this. Um, it's meant to help teach social emotional skills to kids, in particular, um, self awareness, being aware of your own emotions, especially your big emotions, in this case, um, anger, but it, it, it applies to everything. Um, but also um, how to, what to do when you do feel those big emotions. And um, I got the idea to write the book when I was working for Head Start, uh, Head Start out in Hill City. Um, I was meeting with parents and talking with them about things that they can do to um, support their child's social emotional development and um, found that many of them wanted to do things but they weren't always sure what to do. And giving them um, a specific script or, or specific steps that they could follow was the most su successful um, um, strategy that I used. And in the book, in addition to um, the actual story, there's also um, some caregiver activities in the back that people can do before they read, while they read, and after they read to kind of reinforce those ideas. So were you so, the illustrator too? Um, no, the illustrator is um, Carissa gonzalez Othon. She was a student at Fort Hayes. Oh, okay. um, she's a she was she helped make my ideas into something that's real. She did an awesome you job need with illustrators it. Illustrators so. too. So. Absolutely. So. Well, thank you for sharing that book with thank us. You. And again, it's called Bug and Boo. Bug How'd and you come Boo. up with the names on that one? Um, Bug and Boo are the nicknames of my children. Okay. Um, Bug is my son, who's three, and um, Boo is my daughter, who's seven. It's their nickname since they were infants, and okay. I always thought that it would be neat to put them together as a story. Very so. good. Well, Thank we'll you. talk. Uh, we've we've talked about that, but I want to talk about an award you've won. Yeah. Uh, you've got an award. You are a past president of what? What organization was um, it? I'm a, a past president of the Kansas Association of School Psychologists. Um, this award is for um, my work in. Um, um, expanding the role of a school psychologist as a mental health provider. As we've talked before, in a lot of places, the school psychologist ends up focusing more on the academic side. Um, I've been lucky enough to work with school psychologists in the past um, when I did my practicum, um, as well as in my own practice, having opportunities to expand that role um, into mental health and um, supporting um, student social emotional learning, both at, in Head Starts, but also through my own through um, work in elementary schools and high schools with individual students. Well, so. congratulations on all of that stuff. Great. So Great. an author, an award winner, and also school psychologist, USD 489. Great. Anything else you have plans on adding to your resume soon? Um, I, I don't think so. I don't think so. so. Well, okay. I appreciate you coming in and talking to us on the show today. And again, uh, if, if anybody needs any information on being a school psychologist, maybe there's a young budding uh, kid out there that wants to do it, I guess they can contact you, right? Absolutely. I'd love to talk to anybody about becoming a school psychologist. So. Very good. School psychologist, USD 49. It's Kyle Carlin. He is our guest today on the forum. I'm Mike Kerner in for Gary Shorman. Thanks for being with us today. It's brought to you by Hayes Med. It's a beautiful day in our super high speed internet great customer service neighborhood. Like you, this is where we live. In fact, our company is employee owned, so it's our goal to improve the quality of life for everyone in our community by delivering faster, more reliable internet, clearer, more feature laden phone service, quality TV channels, all with the level of customer service you'd expect from people who are your neighbors. Eagle Communications. Our community connected.